Hey kids, welcome to Unit 5, Lesson 2, Row Major Traversal, Exercise Number 1. This is an Investigate and Modify lesson. We're going to run the program to observe the results. Then we're going to experiment with the program by making the following modifications. Change one line at a time, then run our program after each change and observe the results. Well, then we got a bunch of stuff to do down here. Let's take a look at our code. We have a 2D array. This is already initialized and with data inside of it. Might be easier to see it like this. We're instantiating a new object, Miss Mitchell. It is taking that weekly grades 2D array. Then we're printing off the Miss Mitchell object that is calling the get grades method under teacher Java. Let's take a look at teacher Java. We have one private array, weekly grades. Our constructor is taking that one 2D array. We have a get method that's getting the weekly grades of the students. And then we have a get method. And it is a string. And it's creating a string, which is results. That's what we're returning. It looks like we're going through the weekly grades array and printing the results. What do I think is going to happen when I hit run? Row right here can be substituted for zero, and we're going to progress through it. The weekly grade's length is how many arrays I have. One, two, three. I think it's going to print off the first number in each of the array as we go through the loop, because the weekly grade's length is three. That's how many elements we have in that array. Within that array, we have a, another array. That's our 2D part. That is set to zero, which means column at index zero. Well, let's see if I'm right. 85, 92, 76. This was just going through and printing off the first number in each of the row. And remember from our last lesson, in order to call an element, we took the variable and we have two square brackets. First is always the row, second is the column. We're gonna make the modifications to the teacher class to return a string containing the values in each column of each row. And we just talked about this. If I change this zero to a one, instead of getting 85, 92, 76, I should get 90, 87, 89. 90, 87, 89. And just so we know we're right, we'll hit run one more time. Now we get 78, 80, 97. And that shows again, this second little square bracket is just our columns of our array. We're going to change the for loop and get grades with the following method. Let's copy this. Control C. When we paste it in, we're only pasting over this for loop. Don't paste over your string for your result or the return result. Let's paste it in. Looks like we have everything there. What do I think this code's going to do? This outer row, we've learned from previous lessons. The outer loop runs once, then we do everything within the inner loop. Go to the next on the outer, run everything on the inside. Next to the outer, everything on the inside. So we need one to control the length in our column and one for our row. And there are two ways to search through. We do have row major, which we're talking about right now. And there's also column major. And column major is when we go down through the columns. For this lesson though, we're using row major. Just as a note though, you could be asked to do either for the FRQ on the AP CSA exam. When I hit run, what do I think is gonna happen? I think it's gonna print off this entire set of numbers in this array. 
Because what we're doing is the outer loop is looping through, and this is how many grades there are, which is three. And then on the inner loop, we want to go through all of the grades there. How do we call a 1D array? We use one square bracket. So that's why we have a zero there. The outer loop will traverse the row, and the inner loop will traverse the column. And then we're just printing off the results of the row and column each time we go through. That's why I think when I hit run, I'm going to get all of those results printed off. Let's hit run and see if we're right. We do. We get them all to print off. What do you think the purpose of the zero in weekly grade zero length is? Try changing the condition to weekly grades length. How does it change the output? Remember, when we call a 1D array, we use one square bracket. A 2D array is an array of arrays. The outer array is the rows. If we want to go through each column within a row, we have to call a row to look through. Since in APCSA, we don't have to worry about jagged rows or rows with different lengths, we usually call zero. But a lot of people also substitute zero for row, it's the same thing. If I change this to just length, I'm going to miss the last number in each of the rows. Why is that? Well, this is four long, but I have three elements. That means if I'm just going through the length of the element, that is three. So that means I'll probably get 85, 90, 78, 92, 87, 80, 76, 89, 97. Let's see if we're right. Looks like we do. We missed the last because again, the array is three elements long. Within each element, we have four additional elements, an array within an array. So again, you have to think about this like our rows and columns. We have one more to do here. Add the following code to the get grades method after the inner loop, but inside the outer loop. Run the program, what do you see that happens? We're gonna go back to teacher, go down to get grades, and what they wanna do is have us put result plus equal, and we're gonna do some quotes, Inside here, we do escape character N and then a semicolon. Oh, we got to spell this right. How do I think this is going to affect the program? What we've learned about 2D arrays our outer element runs once, the entire inner element runs for its continuous length. What I think is going to happen here. We're going to get a line break every time we traverse through a new array. So it'll look more like how I have the numbers organized in my console.java. Don't forget to add your zero back here so we can pick up all of our numbers. Well, let's see if I'm right. And it looks like my guess is right. So again, our outer loop runs once. The entire inner loop runs for its entire length. Then we move back to our outer loop. And that's what's happening here. A good visualization of our data in our array from myconsole.java. Key takeaway from this lesson is what a row major traversal is. And that is going through each row one at a time. So our outer loop will run once. We'll go through all of the data within it and then move to the next row in our array. It'll go through all of the items within that. We again move on to the next row and traverse through it. We can also do column major traversal, which is the opposite. It goes down through all of the elements in the first position in the array then the second, third, and fourth. And again, there's reasons why we would use both. And you can expect to see either of them on the AP CSA exam. Finally, we further reinforced what a 2D array is. And remember, 
that is just rows and columns. You've seen this on tables, Excel, or Sheets. Hopefully this video helped you understand row major traversals a little better. As always, if you have any questions, come see me. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. See you later, kids. Bye, bye, bye.